Hello, my name is Leanne Haran. I'm a director of Parramatta Lions Club, immediate past president um, in 2017. Um, I'm here today to talk to Pastor John Hugo, who is partnering with us um, with the club in, in a project that we're doing. And, and John's actually um, a new member, will be a new member of Parramatta Lions Club as well. Um, so let me introduce you to John Hugo. Thank you, Leanne. Um, my name is John, as Leanne has mentioned. Uh, I'm from Solomon Islands, uh, in the Honera. Uh, we have established the work in Honera, outside of Honera at Global Harvest Centre, Gilbert Camp. And uh, we're happy to connect with the Lions Club in Parramatta and be part of what uh, the vision and the purpose um, of the Lions Club in, this, in the Solomon Islands. Well, that's fantastic, John. <coughs> John, can I ask you, um, what role do you take in the community um, at the school and in Gilbert Camp? Yeah, I was the chairman of the school and also the pastor of the church. We run the school and the church having a vision to uh, bring education to our community is one of our passion. Uh, the Solomon Islands, in our context, education is not easy. It is very hard in every areas where children have to have access in education. And that's one of the reasons why we started the school. Mm. So you started the school at, from the church building, is that correct? Yes. Uh, we. Decided to start the school um, in the year 2008. Uh, we have no buildings outside that during that time, but we decided to start in the church and and uh, yeah, get the students, get the teachers, and the start. Even we don't really fully understand what would be like. Uh, will cost us, uh, but we have the passion mm -hmm. to start. Thank you. Do you know, John, uh, just thinking that Scott and I met you in 2009, when my husband worked as a Piccanini nurse, a pediatric nurse in Solomon Islands with yes. Aspen Medical, and we met up with you then, and, and, and really, you just basically had put in your water tank next to the, the church, um, for the school and yes. for the children and for the church, and um, you had all the, um, the small like um, preparation classes for kindy um, alongside of the the church building and you had it all cornered off and um, you didn't even have walls in in the building or um, but you've come such a long way you didn't have chairs or tables in a lot of cases the children were sitting on the floor at that time the, the teachers weren't even getting um, paid yes Can you talk a bit about the teachers Yes, oh, it's a really challenging journey um, to get the teachers that come and teach in our school. And I remember that we haven't paid them <laughs> for probably three years. They wow. just got something like fifty dollars a month. That's very small for as a token mm -hmm. appreciation every fortnight. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been doing that. Uh, for 2000, since 2008 to 2011, then we finally get the government registered the school, mm -hmm. and that is when uh, the government start to support in uh, paying the salary of the teachers mm -hmm. and uh, put a bit of grant to the school in terms of resources. Mm -hmm. But even that, we still had a big uh, need to build our classrooms mm. and um, continue to create um, a good environment, good buildings for the school. Mm. I know, um, so when my son went over, I believe that was in around 2013, you had just put on a new kindy class. Exactly. And you had actually had coral on the floor. For the children and, and it was like oh hang on a minute that's a little bit <laughs> bit hard on the little little people yes um and so so now you've um you're actually building a new kindy building yes again 
we we actually um, having a plan put in place to build a, a new kindred yep. for the AHL. Uh, upgrade a little bit more and mm -hmm. create a good environment uh, for the learning of the kids. Yeah. But then we haven't finished the building yet. Uh, we are on say 50 percent. Um, yeah. Almost to finish it, but then the finishing part is yet something yeah. that has to be done. And so, what do you need actually for the building to be finished before you can use it as a classroom? Yeah, before we can use the classroom and it looks very good for the children to use, we have to complete that uh, building. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to lay down tiles, we need to tile the whole right. floor and um, put up the windows. Uh, security nets mm. and um, paintings, yeah, and complete the do the finish work mm -hmm. of the classroom. And so, what's what's holding you back? Um, is it just time, or is it resources? Are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Yeah, good, good uh, question, Lian. Um, we have challenges in terms of finances mm -hmm. uh, because when we put this uh, early childhood up. We also start uh, our two staff houses mm -hmm. and also prepared a uh, three block classroom for the secondary school as well. So, so can I ask the money that's spread all over these uh, projects. Yeah, that's this, really, that yeah. brings me to my next question. So, can I ask why you started the other projects as well? Is that uh, a simple? We started the other project because it's the time frame. Mm. And we are running up against time, and we yeah. just we are preparing ourselves for 2019. Yeah, that would be our first secondary school. Oh, okay. And also, um, because John, you've you've actually got a Lucas Mill in Solomon Islands, haven't you? Yes. Um, that that you have your own business cutting the wood, and and you've got your dozer. So, um, would it be right for me to say that you're also using what you have? So exactly. You can set your foundations and you, you, um, the structure in place um, with the building and then as the money comes you can do each step. Is that, am I right in believing that? That's right. Uh, yeah. Everything that uh, we sort of generate an income through our business like transport business and timber milling business, mm -hmm. we put back into the community. Mm -hmm contributing uh, in terms of finances, in terms of timber milling, put the timbers back into mm -hmm. building, these mm -hmm. buildings. And uh, th that's what helps to uh, quicken the, our work because we had the mill, we have the dosa mm -hmm. to cut down logs and uh, mill the timbers. Mm -hmm. Yes. So exactly as uh, Everything that we have, we always put back into the school. That mm. helps us to do a little bit more in our developments, mm. in the vision. It's just to bless the whole community. Mm. Yeah. So in the community of Gilbert Camp, how many people actually live in Gilbert Camp? Yeah, probably around Gilbert Camp itself, it's going up to more than 10,000. 10,000 people. Wow, that's amazing. So, um, and Honiara, because you're actually up on the hill from Honiara, isn't it? Yeah, Honiara, yeah. the population in Honiara at the moment uh, is going up to 70,000 cool. people in Honiara. Wow. Yeah. And so your province is Guadalcanal, is that correct? Yeah, Honiara is in Guadalcanal. And so how many, like I'm going back a bit, I guess, how many people would be on the island of Guadalcanal? Gunakan itself, we have probably more than 100,000. 100,000. And yeah. there's many different provinces of Solomon Islands. We have as, many, as many, background. many different. So over 90. Yeah. Yeah. Over, over 90 different islands. That we have yeah. nine uh, main provinces. Wow. Well, uh, mm. Okay, so coming back to Gilbert Camp, so there's 10,000, around 10,000 people that just live in your little community there. And so you have. Um, do you take a leadership role in Gilbert Camp or yes, you, um, we 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 
involved in in the community like I myself I was the pastor of the church and mm -hmm. also involved in the school as a chairman mm -hmm. so that is um, the role that I'm doing okay. in the community yeah. yes and how long have you actually lived in Gilbert Camp for we live uh, we, we established this church in 1991 and not until 2008 we started the school mm -hmm. and uh, from 2008 up to now like the school is growing we have more children coming to the school at the moment um, in our registration this year we have 340 children are coming oh. to our school mm. and uh, the number goes up every year and uh, yeah it's just amazing so what what ages do you have that attend your school we have um, from the early childhood we have year four is the earliest so year five then uh, grade one would be seven six and seven then from two grade two would be around eight nine and ten some children they they even went to school late, yeah. so you might be surprised some of the kids in um, grade 6 are already around 16 years right, okay. old. Yeah. Well, yeah. so what grade do you actually, what's, what's the higher, highest class that you have? What yeah. level, I guess you could say, of education? Yes, um, at the moment we have, uh, in primary we have level of one or grade one to grade six grade the six. highest at the moment and the older student in grade six the older students in grade six probably their age around 16 or even probably 17 years old okay. yeah so right. that's um, yeah very big uh, um, gap yeah. in terms of we talk about age Mm -hmm. Because the children they go to schools quite late. Yeah. Yeah. So your goal is to at the moment you're building a secondary class, so that will take them into high school. Yes. Um, Probably once we had this uh, secondary class started, we want to run the the uh, seven or form one mm -hmm. from that uh, new classroom, and our goal is to reach uh, year twelve. Right. The school of the year 12. I guess with understanding that your oldest child in year 6 could be 16 or 17, um, I understand more now why you would like to do a trade school in your high school exactly. because um, high school studies. Yes, one of, one of the plans uh, to run the trade school is to get these uh, children who are uh, not very well or very good at academically, mm -hmm. but they are good at skills. Mm. Once we identify that, and if they don't continue on to year uh, seven, mm. and somehow if they drop, they go straight into trade school to train some skills. Um, You've often said to me, John, that Solomon people um, learn by doing, learn by watching first, and then doing. Exactly. So um, it's, it's, I, I guess, in some ways, very similar to some education techniques here in Australia, but. Um, yeah, it's yeah, it's it's a very special thing uh, about Solomon Islands. The people they learn from watching, mm -hmm. learn from doing, mm -hmm. even though they don't have uh, went through education. Mm -hmm. Most people they are very good in just learning skills by you showing them what to do, and mm -hmm. they just do that and uh, develop that and it become more better mm. yeah so John um, could you tell us a bit about your your goal your vision about um, inviting trades people to come to the school to um, perhaps spend some time in Solomon Islands and share their trade just simply what we were talking about just now showing the youth through watching and, and then doing um, yes. So can you tell us a bit about that vision that you have? The, the vision to start the straight school is, um, I know that um, once we connected with uh, the Lions Club in Parramatta mm -hmm. and um, we set up the straight school, already we have the accommodations available right, okay. to look after 